Oh, hello kids. I didn't see you there. I was just reading a book I wrote, Alison's Fishing Birds. Would you like me to read a bit to you? You would? All right, let's get started then. Page 33, Chapter 4, The Magansas. The fishing birds that Alison saw most often and most easily in her river were the American Magansas. There were always some playing and splashing and swimming along the rapid that ran past her house. She saw them whenever she went to the sandy pool. And there were more of them farther up the river, among the islands and farther down the river on the tide flats in the slough. For most of the year, Alison saw only females and young birds. They were handsome enough with their grey backs, their red-brown heads and their ragged crests sitting easily on the water and swimming with strong strokes of their pale feet. But in the spring, the male birds came and these were so handsome that Alison held her breath for a moment whenever she saw one. One winter, when Alison was seven or eight years old, she made friends with an old female Maganza who spent a lot of time in the still water behind the little wing dam that Alison's father had built out into the river near the house. Every afternoon, as soon as she got back from school, Alison used to go very quietly down to the river and nearly always the Maganza was there. At first she used to fly off whenever Alison came, but soon she got to know that Alison would not hurt her. Then she just went on with her business, swimming all the time out towards the swifter water of the rapids, and at last drifting down and away with it, but not frightened at all. Sometimes the Maganza would keep swimming so close to the bank of the river that Alison could see the short, jagged teeth in her orange bill. Alison's father told her that the Maganza was a female, so Alison called her Mrs Sawbill. And Alison's father had told her that when the spring came, Mrs Sawbill might just possibly have a nest down there somewhere near the wing dam and raise a family of little Sawbills. This seemed very exciting to Alison, and as spring came, she was more and more careful to go down to the river every day, and as many times a day as she could. And at last, one day, towards the middle of March, she went down there and found two Magansas, Mrs Sawbill, and a great big handsome male. The male flew away at once, and Mrs Sawbill edged out in the current far more quickly than usual and soon she had drifted down a little way, she flew off after him. The next day Alison went down to the river more quietly and carefully and found them both there again. This time the male, Alison called him Mr Sawbill already, was less nervous or else he didn't see Alison at all because both of them stayed there behind the dam and went on with what they were doing. At first they didn't seem to pay much attention to each other, but soon Alison felt that Mr Sawbill was swimming very proudly and carefully, trying to get Mrs Sawbill to look at him and see what a fine fellow he was. As a matter of fact, Alison decided he was a fine looking fellow. He was bigger and heavier than Mrs Sawbill, and his head, instead of being red brown, was a glossy dark green so dark that it was almost black. His back and wings were mostly black and white and his breast was the loveliest, smoothest, pale, creamy pink that Alison had ever seen. After a little while, Mr Sawbill swam a circle round Mrs Sawbill. Then he lifted himself up from the water and flapped his wings several times, showing off the beautiful plumage of his breast. Then he kicked hard with one foot and splashed water high in the air. Alice can see the beautiful bright orange colour of his foot as it came out of the water. But Mrs Sawbill still didn't seem to be paying much attention. In a little while she edged out into the swift water and dived under so that Alison could not see her anymore. Mr Sawbill followed, still swimming on top of the water and lifting his head high to look for her. 
she came up far downstream and he flew towards her across the water. Before he could reach her, she was flying too and they both flew upstream beyond the sandy pool. Alison saw them together again many times. Mr Sawbill grew more and more vigorous and acrobatic in the water swimming and diving and splashing and flapping his wings and showing himself off in every possible way. Sometimes Mrs Sorbill joined him in all this, but generally she just swam about her business in a very dignified way and refused to be greatly impressed. Towards the end of April, Alison sometimes found Mr Sorbill alone and once or twice, as she watched, Mrs Sorbill came from somewhere close by and joined him. Alison told her father about this and he said that Mrs Sorbill must have a nest somewhere. A few days after that, Alison and her father went to look for the nest. Alison's father walked ahead of her, keeping along the edge of the river and looking carefully up under the dry bank that is only covered in flood time. Soon he stopped and beckoned Alison to come up to him. She came along on tiptoe, trying not to breathe too hard and looking at the bank where he was pointing. At first she could only see a tangle of many tree roots. Then suddenly she could see Mrs Sorbill's grey back tucked away amongst them and her red head, very still, held forward and low down. Alison and her father crept away very quietly. Several days later, when Alison came back from school, her father said, Mrs Sawbill's off her nest. I saw her go up towards the sandy pool. We can go down and look at her eggs now if you are quick. So they went down along the river to where they had seen Mrs Sawbill. And while her father kept watch to see if Mrs Sawbill was coming back, Alison crept up to the nest and looked in. She saw 11 eggs, a little larger than chicken eggs and of pale fawn colour. They were all neatly packed together in a hollow among the roots and Alison could see that Mrs Sawbill had made a soft place for them with grass and moss and some of her own downy feathers. It was very exciting to be looking at the nest and the eggs looked so fresh and clean and Alison could almost feel that they were warm. But she was afraid that Mrs Sawbill would come back and find her there and decide to leave them. So she and her father went away quickly as they could. Alison only saw Mrs Sawbill once again after that and she was careful not to go near the nest again because she wanted Mrs Sawbill to hatch out the eggs and bring up the little Sawbills close to her house. Early in June, Alison saw Mrs Sawbill's family out on the water for the first time. She was careful not to go too close, but she could see that the little ducklings were round and fluffy and quite often she saw two or three of them riding on Mrs Sawbill's back. They grew fast and soon began to look a lot like Mrs Sawbill herself, only smaller. Generally, they followed along behind their mother, swimming very smoothly and sedately, but sometimes they played hard and splashed water all over the place. Mrs Sawbill took them up in the river almost to the sandy pool and down the river almost to the bridge, but very seldom farther than that in either direction and Alison could nearly always see them when she went down to the river. Once or twice, Alison was able to watch them from quite close because they came in and fished and dived and played right behind the dam. As they grew older, they became busier and more active all the time. The very last time Alison saw them all together was just before the spawning salmon began to die in the fall. She went down to the river one day to look for them and at first she couldn't see them at all. Then she noticed a lot of splashing in the shallow water down near the bridge. Among the splashes she could just see Mrs Sawbill and all her little Sawbills. In a little while they stopped splashing and began to work up the river. Mrs Sawbill was swimming first, putting her head down under the water from time to time to look for fish. 
Suddenly she saw some and began to flap over the water at a great speed, half flying, half swimming. Behind came all the little sawbills, half flying, half swimming too, and making a great splashing noise. Then they began to dive after the fish, popping under water one after the other until they were all out of sight. Then they began to pop up again, one after another, and so suddenly that they seemed to bounce. It was very funny, and Alison wanted to laugh out loud. But they were getting close now, and she was afraid of frightening them. After they had swallowed the little fish they had caught, they came on up the river again. And just below the smooth water that lies in behind the dam, they found some more little fish, and went through all the flapping and diving again. When that was over, they did what Alison always remembered afterwards. They all came swimming up through the still water behind the dam, Mrs Sawbill leading all the others, just like her now and almost as big, strung out behind her. They swam very proudly and sedately right past Alison, as though they were on a parade. When they came to the dam, they swam out past the end of it and began to fly. They flew together all the way up the rapid to the sandy pool, then round the bend and out of sight. And that was the last Alison saw of them, because soon afterward the salmon began to die, and there were so many mergansas on the river that she couldn't tell which was which. But Alison says she supposes they are all full grown now, and have families of their own. Well, that's all for today. It was lovely to have you all here with me. I'm looking forward to our next visit. This has been Reading with Roddy.